go ahead. Uh, let me call the uh, the New Canaan Inland Wetlands Commission meeting of Monday, uh, May 16th to order. Will the secretary take the roll, please? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Stepanek? Here. Uh, Angela Jameson? Here. Peggy Kirby? Here. Beth Brunali? Present. Um, George Here. Perkins? Here. Anthony Sillo? Absent. Uh, Priscilla Wojcicki? Here. Beth Sanford? Here. Very good. I think that's the complete roster, folks. Priscilla, would you fill in for uh, Anthony Zillo? Yes. Thank you. Number three, approval of the agenda. Uh, I have a comment to make about the agenda. It has to do with item number 10. Uh, uh, this item will not be heard tonight. It will be heard at the, at the June meeting. Let me just read it uh, so you all know what it is. It's number 10, notice of violation, parentheses, order to halt all work, end the parentheses, issued by 17 and 23 Hill Street, Hill Street 72 LCC. Applicant requested to appear before the commission to, rev to review written reply and discuss violation activities. Uh, 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 Chris, Christopher Smith, the attorney, was to make the presentation. So uh, just to say it again, number 10 will be moved to the June meeting. Approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of April 11th. Uh, any comments on that? Any? If not, can I hear a motion? I'll move. Second. Priscilla and George, all those in favor, raise their hands. Aye. Aye. All those opposed, no opposed. The site visit minutes of May uh, 4th, two, uh, 2022. Any comments on that? Who, who, who did not, uh, who did attend? I attended, uh, I attended. Beth Sanford. Uh, uh, Peggy, who did we miss him? Oh, Anthony was there, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So the three of us will vote. Uh, I'll move to approve. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm abstaining. I'm abstaining as well. I was not right, present. Right, right. I want to stay. I'm, I was not there. Right. So the site visit minutes were approved. Okay. <laughs> Applications to be received and if complete, scheduled for regular meeting of June 20th. Application number 212243, 887 Wheat Street, uh, uh, LLC. Uh, Keith E. Simpson, he will be the presenter on June 20th. A, we'd like to uh, schedule a site visit for that particular application on June 1st. It's, it's a Wednesday at 7.30 in the morning. Um, any, uh, who can make that? I can make it. Beth, uh, two Beths, both Beths. Um, Peggy? You know what, I, I don't want to commit that I will be there um, in Runa Quorum, so I'm just gonna, I'm going to not say yes. I may be able to make it, but I don't want to commit to yes because I'm not sure yet. George, I, what about you? I will definitely not be there. We'll be out of town. Okay. And so what's, that gives I, us... I may be able to make it if I don't have to go into Manhattan that day. So we got three yeses and two maybes and one no. And one no. <laughs> And Anthony is not here, so. Priscilla, did you have a thought of that day? Are you able to make it? I will very much try to. I, I will plan on it, yes. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll go with June 1st at 7.30, and I will double check with Anthony. Okay. And well, uh, some of these other people, 
if you are able to make it, if, if as we get closer to June 1st, call Kathleen, say, okay. yes, I'm coming or no, I'm not coming. I wish I, I, I would appreciate that. Yeah, I will. All right. <laughs> Application number 2122-29-320 North Wilton Road, uh, Ronald Meckler and, I'm sorry, Jacqueline, Jacqueline Shapiro, uh, Agent David Berespi, uh, RLL Rock Spring Design Group. Is he here, uh, David? That's me, good evening. Oh, good, okay. You David, got the floor, I, David. David, I made you the co-host, so you should be able to share your screen. Okay, great. So good evening, everybody. My name is David Berespi. Uh, landscape architect, owner of Rock Spring Design Group. The application tonight is for some improvements at 320 North Wilton Road, which you know some people know as the Murphy House. Uh, just a bit of history, I've been working on this property for about 20 years with the owners, doing various improvements over the years. We've done several wetlands applications. Um, so this is a property I'm very familiar with. Kathleen is familiar with as well, because we've done applications before. Um, tonight, the application is for both dredging the pond and creating a small pedestrian bridge to cross over the stream so that they have access to the Briscoe Road side of the pond. So I'm going to start with my presentation. Give me a second so I can share the screen here. Here we go. So this is the can everybody see the survey here? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is the survey of the entire property done by RKW. Uh, for reference, Briscoe Road is over here on the right side. North Wilton Road is down here. Um, the house is over here. And the pond and the area in question is over in the northeast corner of the property. The property, Briscoe Road is here. This is our abutters map, uh, who were all notified for a frame of reference. This is St. Luke's. Um, and then I'm gonna show you some pictures of the property. Uh, this is looking from the grassy area on the east side of the pond, looking back towards the house. So from this view, Briscoe Road would be right behind me. And you can see there's a, a nice grassy area here alongside the existing pond, some rhododendrons back here. It's a nice area. Um, they had a, at one point, there was a fire pit here and a tree well over here around a large tree that had been lost many, many years ago. This is looking back towards Briscoe Road, which would be back over here. This is the tree well. We're now looking north along the grassy area and the pond is over here on the left-hand side of the screen. This is kind of looking back down the grassy area. Just so you guys are familiar with the property here. So when we get talking about it, you have some, some frame of reference here. Uh, here's, the pond, here's the house, here's the pond. Um, this is the, the grassy lawn area. This is looking back up the pond. Owner's standing there watching me. You can see in the pond here, you know, this is the north end of the pond and you can see it is, you know, this is the bank over here and then back over here. And a lot of this area has filled in with sediment over the years. Um, it was quite, quite dramatic, but it's a beautiful spot. Uh, so the plan is to, this is a full view of the property. I'm gonna to go to the next sheet, which sort of zooms in a little bit here. Um, so the plan is to dredge the existing pond. And on average, there is about two to three feet of sediment uh, through most of the pond. And then as we get to the north end of the pond where the brook comes in, it's a little bit deeper um, and the sediment has actually breached the surface. So the plan is to dredge the pond using a hydraulic system where they actually suction the sediment out and the sediment is then put into a large sack, essentially. 
It's called the GeoTube. I think I included information on the product uh, with our submittal packet. And that GeoTube would be located in here on the grassy area. And they use the suction drive. Is it just me or did, we, did anyone else lose him? Oh, he froze? I think we lost him. <laughs> no, he's frozen, I think. Oh. Can you hear us? Hear. Okay. I can hear you guys. Okay. Well, now we can hear you. We, yeah, you lost hear you. For we lost bit. you for a second there, David. Okay. Let me just check my connection here. I'm sitting right next to the router, so hopefully it's good. <laughs> Sounds you like you were in the pond. <laughs> I was in the pond. I was looking, I had to verify those sediment depths for you. <laughs> so where do we leave off? Uh, We're talking about the geotube. So yeah. the sediment from the pond will be put into the geotube where it will dewater over about a month. Um, and then the sediment will be removed off site uh, once it has a chance to dewater. And then, you know, the intent is to create a small um, pool here in the beginning of the pond uh, where, where what we call a plunge pool, where the, the sediment can actually fill that over time and it will be easier to clean. Um, so that will be an improvement to the pond. Um, once the pond is dredged, we would like to create a path that connects to the existing outdoor areas on the property over here and allows them to tra traverse the slope with some small steps, come through some existing trees, and then cross a small bridge that would be put in at the very north end of the pond. And when this pond was created back in the 50s when the house was built, uh, this is where they actually put in the cofferdam and to allow them to create this pond. So there's actually sort of a rise in the landscape here where there was a structure at one point, like an earthen berm that you know kept this area dry while they created the pond. So we're planning to reuse that area. Um, the bridge abutments and the steps would be designed to match the existing stonework on the house, uh, which is very unique. Um, it was done in the Usonian style where, you know, there's a big, big mortar joint and that uses all the material on the site. Uh, there's two piles of rocks, one here and one over here that we anticipate using, utilizing for the steps in the bridge. That way we're continuing with the, the design intent of the original property and, you know, we're not disturbing anything additional to because they're existing rock piles um, and we're not bringing, importing any material there. The path would then continue along the side of the pond here, all the way down along here. And then, you know, we'd like to create a small garden structure here in the theme of the house, uh, matching the orientation and picking up on some of the design details with different parts of the house. Uh, which gives the owner some place to sit over there. Uh, so it sort of becomes a destination where they can actually sit here, look back out over the pond and enjoy their property. Uh, right now, there's no way, I'm gonna go back to the previous plan here. Right now, there is no way for the owners to get from this area of the property here to this area without going all the way out to Briscoe Road, walking around here and then coming through a small break in the trees here. Uh, we looked at some different locations for doing the bridge and you know none of them were suitable alternatives and none of them had less disturbance all of them would have created more disturbance uh, so we settled on this location as sort of our best alternative to uh to get from this side to this side there's a lot of um Looking at the property now, there's a lot of invasive species along the edge of the pond here. Um, there's bittersweet vine, there's um, Japanese barberry. There's a lot of Japanese barberry up in here, but we're not planning on touching it. Um, there's Rosa rugosa, there's bullbriar on the trees over on this side of the property. You know, it's just from years of not 
not keeping on top of those things that they start to creep in and they take over. So now's the time, you know, we're going to renovate the pond and clean up the invasive species and then come back in along the, the edge of the pond here and replant it with, you know, native species to the area, some pickerel weed, um, some of the sweet uh, summer plethora ulnifolia, some fother gilla, some button bush, different types of ferns, um, some viburnums, some of the um, Virginia sweet spire to give it a, a nice native look over here. And then the existing lawn area would be, you know, recreated and renovated in the exact, exact location as it is. Um, Access for the project will be off of Briscoe Road and it will come, there's an existing area next to the telephone pole. So we'll be coming through there. Uh, there are some pines here that need to get cleaned up and removed because they're up in the wires. So we wanna get rid of that. There's a tree over here, spruce tree over here that needs to come down because it was hit by lightning. Um, and then there are some small saplings here at the end of the bridge that will need to be removed uh, just to allow for for this project to occur. And then it's just a matter of cleaning up around the perimeter of brush, some invasives, fallen trees, that sort of stuff, just to clean the area up. Um, at the end of the project, this will all be regraded, the lawn recreated, we'll remove the access way, plant some screening trees along the edge here and put in a pedestrian gate. Uh, so they have maintenance, access in the future and they can control that access point. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, this is a look at the structure we're trying to create and kind of how it would look next to the pond. I believe that's in your package. This is uh, a view of the bridge and we're trying to you know span the entire water area and not go into the stream bank at all, but you know, operate at the edge of the wetlands, sort of straddling the wetlands limit line and the upland area. It's very, very rocky and it's, um, there's some material that was pulled out of when the original pond location uh, that's deposited, particularly on this side. The stonework on the bridge would match the existing house. The railings, we're going to pick up the detail on the existing deck around the back of the property so that all of this stuff seems to match and flow together seamlessly. Site details. Um, we had one of the companies to do who was doing the pond, bidding on the pond renovation project come out and they actually floated around the pond and took depths of the water and depths of the sediment. Um, and this is what's shown here. Down towards the south end of the pond, you know, there's probably two to three feet of sediment and five feet of water. And as you move to the north end of the pond, you know, it's three or four feet of sediment and no water at all in some areas. So the pond definitely needs to be, uh, definitely needs to be dredged. This is longitudinally down the center of the pond. Our bridge will be here. There are some existing boulders here. Um, the deep sediment areas at the north end of the pond. Then you can see it trails at, as it moves towards the south end of the pond. Do you have any questions? I can talk about how the, the hydraulic dredging works if you'd like, or we can entertain some questions about the location of the project or any impacts it might have. Uh, this is George Perkins for the record. Uh, just a quick question on yeah. the marine life. Um, uh, when you're dredging, is there any, uh, any potential for destroying it, uh, any of the marine life at this point? The, the process of hydraulic dredging is much less disrupt, disruptive than uh, a traditional dredging operation where we would, you know, dam off the existing pond and then pump around uh, and then basically dewater the pond, excavate it out, and then let it refill. 
uh, the hydraulic dredging, they want the pond filled with water, uh, which actually makes it easier for them to suck the, the sediment out. So that makes it easier for any aquatic wildlife in there to sort of avoid the area because they're, they're working in a very small area at each time because it's, it's a hose probably about that big around that they're mm. underwater in diving gear going like this, sucking up all the material. So the aquatic life can actually avoid the activity a lot better. Um, what I observed out there were a lot of tadpoles the other day and a lot of bullfrogs. I have not seen any fish in the pond, but there may be some minnows or something, but mostly it's just frogs. And they can they can avoid stuff a little bit better. David, where's the water come from? Is it, is it come from a brook up above? There is a brook that runs um, along the Briscoe Road. It sort of parallels Briscoe Road. Um, and it comes from the north end of town. I'm not sure exactly where beyond the property it, it really comes from, but it's, I have not seen it completely dry. So there's always a, a decent flow that goes through there. David, it, it, Peggy Kirby, um, when the equipment comes in through Briscoe Road, is it going to be staged on the lawn there? That's the intent is to have the tree guys come in, create that opening so that we can get in from Briscoe Road uh, with the equipment, cut in the anti-tracking pad and then you know, level out the area for the, the silt, uh, the geotube, and then use that area as the staging area. Okay, so, so that that is not all in the wetlands at all, is that no, correct? No, that's all upland area. Right, and um, when you, you talked about the plunge pool, how deep do you expect that plunge pool to be? Um, if in we can get an, an additional two to three feet, it would really be helpful there because it would allow us to, to capture the sediment before it gets to the main part of the pond. They can also, if they find some boulders, they can actually create a little bit of a, a boulder line on the, the south side of that plunge pool so that you know it slows the water down and allows the sediment to fall out before it gets to the main part of the pond. And, and what kind of, how will those boulders be moved? Would those be moved by hand or, or do you have a machine for that? One of the companies that we talked to um, actually has a floating excavator that they use. So it's a, it's a small, small excavator type machine, backhoe type machine that's on pontoons. And they kind of float into the, that area of the pond and they were going to use that to you know, take out the, the deeper sediment at the north end of the pond, create the plunge pool so that, and then they could use that machine to move around any rocks that they found. It'll be deep enough. The water will be deep enough for them to do that. Yes. Okay. Because we had about three feet of water depth, three to four feet of water depth over most of the pond until we got to the very north end of the pond. And if they sort of start at the south end of that that area and just sort of chunk their way in, they will be able to do that. Okay. Um. This is Angela Jameson. I mean, can we just focus for a minute on the, the bridge and the footings that you are going to have and yes. where exactly they will be located? You did say that they would be out away from the from the pond edge. Yes, there's actually I'm going to go back to the pictures for a second. Sure. Just give me a moment. So if you look in this picture, uh, the bridge would actually be, I'm standing on one of where the footings would be. So it would be coming right across through here. Yep. Um, let's see if, and it would be spanning right through here, back here at this end of the pond. Let me see if I've got a little bit better picture for you to see that. You know, this one's probably 
it would be right through this area back here. Um, and there are some large boulders, there's large boulders all over the property. Um, and the thought is, you know, if we can get dig some digging right there adjacent to the pond or right ne adjacent to the stream, we'll have some boulders and we can actually use those boulders as part of the footings and not actually be in the stream at all. So you would actually uh, remove boulders that are close to the stream edge and no, we want um, to leave the boulders close to the stream edge. Okay, got it. And that would be, you would use that as your footing. So you, Yeah, you, kind of integrate them into it. Yeah. So there wouldn't be any construction as such in the pond or the very, um, very close uh, pond edge. Correct. We are trying to stay, keep all of our work outside of the stream channel. And what, what kind of equipment would you need to use to uh, get the footings in? The area is pretty small and pretty confined. So they would probably be using a micro excavator. One that's probably only three or a machine that's three or four feet in width uh, with a rubber track. Um, and they were anticipating being able to, you know, dig on the one side and create the footing there and then maybe bring the machine around to the other side and create the footing on the other side and not have to walk it across the river. Right, how would you get it, sorry, how would you get it across the, the stream then? Um, actually work from the Briscoe Road side of the pond for the, the, the bridge abutment on that side. Yes. And then actually take the machine around and come in down the hill here oh, where right. our path is going to be and then dig it from this side. So you basically go all the way around the, around the property, up the drive and then down to correct we're going to need that machine to to cart to scratch out these path locations anyways mm -hmm. so we'll just bring the machine around and it's a rubber track machine that has very low impact um so that won't damage any of the existing improvements on the property and out of interest when was the pond last dredged do you think I don't believe it's ever been dredged. Hmm. Hmm. I think it's, this is from the original house. Um, I don't know, Jackie may be able to know if the previous owners did it or the original owners did it, but I think this is the first application for dredging of the pond. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump in. Um, the pond has never been dredged. We did purchase it from the original owner and um, they had never dredged it. Um, let's see, we purchased the house in 2001 and they built it in 63. Mm. It's due. <laughs> it's it's overdue. <laughs> well, you can, can see I... some of the sediment here at the north end of the pond has already dried out. Um, oh, this is George Perkins again. Um, what is the overflow condition uh, when it does overflow, you know, like by like 25 years, does it go way up over the bank or get close, you know, uh, what's that like? And um, maybe you can give us a little bit on that. There's probably a, about a foot of grade above the top of this structure back here. So in a large storm event um, that would exceed the capacity of the weir here, it would just go over the top of the dam. Okay. There's plenty of, there's enough bank here and here to keep it contained so that it wouldn't, it wouldn't go over. Um, the only other option would be, I'm going to swing back to the overall site plan here. Um, there is a small finger of wetlands here that then picks up over here. I guess in an extreme, extreme storm event, you know, you could have water that finds its way over this way, um, but it's not going to overtake the top of the banks on the pond. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Kathleen, have, have the neighbors downstream been uh, been notified of this? I 
the notification was um, properly done regarding everyone with 100 feet of the property. I did have one inquiry from uh, one gentleman who actually didn't actually follow up anything. I think once he realized the location of the activity and what they were doing, it wasn't adjoining or adjacent to his property. It just did require the notification. So I know that they, um, the property owner or David did do the notification of everyone involved. Um, this particular location, George had a very good question about, you know, the flooding, like what happens in a storm. Um, I've never had any flooding complaints for this location either. Uh, so, um, you know, the, the pond dredging would be a positive in that it might actually provide some uh, storage uh, during some of the bigger storms that we seem to be having uh, these days. I like the fact that um, David and and the uh, Shapiro's Mecklers have they're really utilizing a lot of natural products on the property, like the stones that are already stockpiled there. I think that's a wonderful use of those stones that have been stockpiled there probably since 1963. <laughs> um, but it, it's, uh, yeah, I think the also the added addition, uh, if some of you that were on the site visit going back a couple months now, I think many of us actually looked at the pond and said, wait, are you going to dredge the pond? And I think that's kind of where the idea sort of started being talked about with uh, David and his clients. So uh, here we are with a a um, a very good comprehensive plan to do not only you know the pond dredging, which clearly I think we can all see needs to be done. The applicants are wishing to do it, which is fabulous, and and then do the other um, beautification of the property with actually incorporating this into an actual usable piece of land for them. Um, I had one other thought. I was going to, I wrote it down, but it's uh, evading me You, right you now. mentioned a special condition. I mean, upon com completion of landscaping activities, a final report by the landscape architect shall be filed with staff prior to the final site inspection by staff. Is, is that what you're looking for, Kathleen? Uh, well, uh, uh, David also mentioned, and the client also wishes to do a at least um, start of or a, a general uh, improvement to the invasive plants that are on the property. I don't know they're looking to go, you know, crazy, crazy, but they are going to take some of the invasive plants and replant them with a native palette, which would really enhance the area and hopefully outcompete the natives that are there. So I think it's an excellent starting point. The, point, the other thing I was looking for is the history that David actually talked about. Uh, I didn't realize this, that the um, the coffer dam when they originally uh, created the uh, the pond was in the location where the bridge uh, is now going to be placed. So that's a good reuse of that area, and it's the narrowest crossing um, to uh, lessen the impacts to wetlands on either shoulder of of that uh, of that stream that comes in, and also provides access for the uh, homeowner to get safely to the other side of the property rather than going onto the road. Um, so yeah, the, the special condition is kind of a standard one that uh, we're seeing more frequently when, because um, we have a lot of um, folks here in New Canaan that are, are engaging landscape architects and they're coming forward with pretty uh, robust plans to replant the property. So I think, uh, you know, I usually like to see the landscape architect carry that mission through and at the completion of that planting, just give give the, me an indication that you know we're we're good. We we you know we we did the planting in accordance to what needed to be done, and uh, maybe we swapped out something along the way. Usually they give me a call, let me know about that. Just a final a final report regarding is the landscaping complete? Because that would be the final thing that uh, would be concluded at this project. Right, and we would yep. be fine with that. David, there seems like there's a lot of moving parts here. I, I guess, what do you start with and, and, and how do you progress with this? Uh, you're not going to do it all at one time, I would imagine, right? No, this is the project has to be sequenced um, because the, the geotube will take up a lot of area in that grass area. Um, as I started before, we'll have the tree company come in and remove whatever trees we need for the construction of the bridge and to create our access way. Uh, then the pond dredging people will come in, uh, create the space they need to do the work, actual do the dredging of the pond, and put the sediment into the geotube. There's going to be probably a month 
to a month and a half where nothing's going to be happening be, except for that geotube dewatering. So that's the water seeping out of the geotube back into the ground and that sediment in the tube drying out. Um, once that is dried, the sediment, the geotube will be opened up, that material taken out and removed off site. Um, Kathy can confirm that that material really isn't suitable for reuse on the property uh, without a lot of soil amendments and, and whatnot. Uh, so it's best to, if we can't use it for fill, it's best to get rid of it. Right. Um, Once the pond yeah. dredging operation is complete and the sediment removed, then the, the masons would come in and they would work on creating the steps and the bridge abutments. Um, and then we would work on creating the pathways. And then finally, you know, once all those people are done and the structure is complete or whatnot, you know, then we have the landscapers come in, they're gonna do the planting, they'll probably do some additional uh, cleanup of invasives um, around the pond and like damaged stuff and whatnot and do their plantings. And then the last thing to be done would be cleaning up that lawn area, re regrading it and backing ourselves out of the site, seeding that area um, and putting in the gate and closing it up so it can all sort of get established. And then we would write our letter to Kathy and say, you skip the gazebo or the um, pavilion. Yes. So the pavilion. That <laughs> would be forget that. at the same time as the path and the steps. Um, we're still playing with a budget on that. So that one might actually have to wait a little while, but you know, that can be done as a discrete project um, within the window of our approval. Hi, this is Beth Sanford um, spe speaking. Uh, just curious in terms of when you're the final step being around the lawn, will you be treating that? Or I mean, how will you treat the, the lawn? Up to this point, we really have tried not to use any pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, et cetera, on the lawn area. Um, right now, it's a mixture of moss and grass. Uh, really, the only thing they do is, is cut it. So I think we would kind of be following in that same um, methodology. There is no other lawn area on the property. Uh, the rest of the property is really just leaf litter and trees and it's very nat in, in a very natural state. Uh, so we'll probably do as little as we need to do to keep this as a, a functioning lawn area. Thank you. Any other questions? Kathleen, you, you're okay. Everything's fine. You already, um, we went through what your comments. So, yes, I kind of jumped ahead, but uh, it was on my on my mind. I, I think, uh, uh, you know, the overall project is is quite uh, quite a good project environmentally. You know, as as long as best management practices are followed during and throughout the construction, which I anticipate they will be. Um, and um, we get maybe a final report at the conclusion of the landscaping activities and also the phasing in um, throughout David's presentation, he kind of walked through what might happen next, but I think it's good to hear again because they, they do have quite a bit of different separate activities taking place on the property, but his approach and uh, expertise in this area, that totally makes sense to me how he's approaching the job or they're approaching the job. and. Um, Really, you know, other than the one special condition recommendation, unless uh, any other commissioner has another comment, I don't have any other comments. I personally think it's a very comprehensive, very good plan. So, um, I agree, and it should be beautiful. Yeah, it should be beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Too bad we don't get to go back. <laughs> yeah. When's well, the party? When's the party? Yeah. You're Grand all opening. Welcome. Oh no, you're all welcome. We're really excited. <laughs> you're all welcome to come back. Um, and I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. We um, we totally changed gears after Kathleen, you came by and said, you know, maybe we should dredge it. And Oops. you opened my eyes to like, yeah, that needs to be taken care of. So um, yeah, so when it's done, my place. Okay. We have to vote on it. We have to vote on it first. Yeah, okay, so. I would like to 
I would like to uh, move approval of the project, including both the dredging of the pond and the building of the bridge and the paths and uh, subject to the one special condition as outline, outlined by Kathleen. I would second. just add and the approval of the, the little gazebo sitting area. Yep. And, and who's seconding it? Is it George? I second. Okay. All those in favor, raise their hand. Aye. 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 All those against it, raise their hand. There isn't any. So uh, motion is uh, approved. Uh, uh, nice, nice, nice job. I, I liked it. It was a very nice job. So thank you. So thank much. you very much. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to excuse myself. And thank you. Good thanks, luck. For, thanks for joining us. OK, take care. Bye now. Kathleen, you have the floor. Thank you very much for your time and thoughtful consideration. OK, and David, if you could. OK, can you just stop sharing? Because I need to have, are you able to <laughs> stop sharing? I did. Is it? Did. OK. It still has you as a co-host on my end. Um, let me just see if I can join these other folks as host also. Well, I'm going to leave. And you all have a very nice night. Nice night. And that should take me out as a host. Don't leave just yet, because if you're a co-host, <laughs> I'm afraid you'll take me down. So let, let me just okay. let me just hold it. Hang on just a minute. You're stuck with us, David. <laughs> I'm, I'm going stuck. to see if I can get um, thank you, David, for an excellent presentation. Yeah, it really was great. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you. I'm gonna have Brendan what? come on. Hi, uh, Brendan, can you unmute yourself and turn your camera on? Um, oh, the camera too. Oh yeah, and um, Brendan, uh, is Tessa going to be doing the? Um, I'm going to make Tessa and you co-hosts. Hopefully, this is going to work here. And okay. I'm not sure who might be um, doing your presentation, but you, you both, if you have slides to share, you should be um, good to go. I and don't. I'm going to let Tessa take the floor, and I'll just be here in the background for any questions. Okay, and David, I have relieved you of your duties. You are dismissed. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have an excellent night. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. All right, well, let's move along. Number nine, application number 21 22 35, 37, 842 Ponus Ridge Road, uh, uh, National Trust for his Historic Preservation. Um, Teresa, how, how do you pronounce that? Did you try this? You're trying to, yeah. All right, TJ Engineering and Greg Sages, uh, Executive Director Glasshouse and Brendan Tobin, Facilities Manager. So you've got the floor guys, so go ahead. Uh, good evening, uh, commission members. Uh, so my name is Justin uh, Chante and I'm uh, uh, from TJ Engineering LLC. Uh, I would like to present this uh, stream stabilization uh, project. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You, you, I got a feedback or something. Oh, is there... like an echo. It's like an echo. Yeah. If everyone um, uh, just put your uh, mics on mute. And yeah. then um, we'll have just Tessa and Brendan be able to speak. Okay. Okay. Is it better? Um, no. Is it no, better? <laughs> okay. So um, I'm going to, I guess, try to share the screen. That's better. Okay. Okay. So um, a few years back, uh, this pond on uh, uh, the house property was dredged, and uh, there were also some uh, step pool step pools up to this uh, uh, up to up to this basically uh, point in the stream uh, itself. And um, so this this particular project is. Uh, I'm still having trouble hearing. Oh. We're, same here. I can't hear. 
Tessa, it seemed to be a oh, I'm I'm muted. Okay, so um, it's you're gonna have to do something. Uh, let me see why that didn't happen here. You're not using the phone to um to do. I'm this. not. Okay, because sometimes that causes feedback. Do you do you have any headphones you can plug into your computer? No. I, I could probably try to switch to no, this is not go. It I actually think, sounds fine now to me. If Tess, you get closer or something. Or yeah, Tess, move, move. when you turn to your left and down. Yes, it's it, it's better. It seems to work. Is it better now? So no, uh, keep going to your left. To your left. Now, yeah. Now, is it better? Try. Yes, yes, in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. That's much. That's much better for some reason in that spot. <laughs> don't move. All right, don't move. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, uh, as I was saying, the pond was dredged, uh, I think, in 2017 or maybe 18, and uh, the step pools installed um, in this area. And uh, this, in 2021, Hurricane I Ida happened, and uh, a little bit more upstream, like this particular area, uh, was, um, I, I guess the owners kind of noticed a lot of erosion and uh, because the pond was dredged, so we wanted to take care of it as soon as possible so that, um, you know, that we, they don't have to dredge the pond again. So I would like to probably share some pictures. Um, is that visible? Can everyone see? Okay, so um, this this uh, bank, especially as yes, you can just see, move, move to the slide of the pictures. We still have the screen of your um, diagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let, let me. And if you're not able to uh, uh, actually get the photo, it's okay. I did include it in my staff report, so all the commissioners okay. did, did see the photo of the um, eroded embankment. Right. Okay, so so I guess I would just I'm gonna explain it a bit what the process, how this is going to be taken care of. So uh, of course it's an uh, it's a stream that has a water flow. So. Uh, we are proposing to um, isolate, I guess, that this area from the flow and uh, to pump upstream, um, or in fact, any kind of a, any kind of a water that would be infiltrated into the construction area to pump slightly downstream with a uh, with the um, erosion controls so that. Uh, that would not be discharged into the stream and polluting the um, the pond with the sediments. Uh, so this would be the sandbags. So th that would be the area that would be isolated from the flow. And uh, the stream bank stabilization would be with the boulders that uh, possibly found on site or like the last time uh, the vendor would be providing. Um, not much of excavation. Uh, so let's see if that would be the bank currently that's undercutting. So just uh, this particular, you know, th this layer would have to go sort of to uh, make, uh, to, to be able to install the rocks and to have this slope slightly flatter than it was uh, previously. And uh, if any, and any uh, I guess, if any erosion also in, in this area, uh, in the stream bed, which I think it's a big rock currently, so probably we just decided that it's not much that you can do with the stream bed. 
because it's it it's kind of lays on the ledge. So for the most part, just the trees, one tree at least removed, and this slope flattened a little bit, and the big boulders installed um, to stabilize the this stream bank. And the reason why this is happening, of course, this is a turn, and uh, with the big storm when the stream is, uh, you know, has different turns. And so th that shoulder usually gets most of the force and starts eroding and un undercutting and making it, um, washing, washing all the sediments into the water body or down, downstream. So that would be, uh, that would be, it. If any questions, please ask. Any questions? Um, this is uh, Angela Jameson. Um, could you just outline what kind of equipment you're planning to use and how you plan to get it to the work site? So we'd be using, uh, you know, similar equipment to what the folks were talking about us in the project ahead of us. Uh, you know excavators uh, we would be either plywooding or using track max in uh, i'm sure all of you guys are familiar with the glass house property we are extremely uh, sensitive to every inch of our property of, as far as not damaging it for not only the environmental reasons but certainly the aesthetic reasons um, <clears throat> the majority of the work uh, would occur uh, like tessa said on the at the eastern bank there. Um, so the machine would be brought in from that side, um, from the paved driveway above down the hill through the field and access uh, the, the stream bank from, from that area. Um, this is accurate, right, Brendan? Yes, yep, absolutely. Sorry, I didn't see your cursor moving there. I was trying to talk professionally. <laughs> uh, this is George Perkins. Uh, yep. I always have questions about water. And, and my question is, um, since I wasn't there and the picture is kind of flat, is, is, that a fairly, is that a fairly steep incline or a slight incline? And um, what type of projections do you have for like 10, 25 year projections? And for the water level, I mean. So, um, is it is it visible currently? Uh, I'm sharing the picture. So we Tessa, we see the uh, the site plan and your uh, your um, the the plan with the topo on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about now? Still the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, so that picture that that uh, I wanted to share, but also it was in the, I guess email to everyone uh, that shows uh, the incline. So uh, it, it is not really very steep, but what happens is just. Uh, sort of like uh, when it, erosion starts, it's undercuts and becomes very steep in that area, like right at the, at the bank. So uh, when I say that it needs to be flattened is uh, this area that needs to be flattened so that it doesn't drop. So currently, if, uh, currently it would be, that's where the drop is. And that's that's basically what's going on. So what we want to do to bring that shore slightly back and to make it flatter and instead to have these big boulders um, to absorb the, the water force as it would be flowing. As Tessa, <laughs> Tessa, Kathleen Holland here. Could you just tell uh, Mr. Perkins the elevation difference between where your approximately your bridge is and where your plunge pool is. What's the elevation mm -hmm. difference between those okay. two? So let me just check. I just can't see it on. So the it's uh, it's. Well, I got 
I could be reading this wrong. I got 272.18 at uh, the north side of the bridge that we walked over. And then I got. So these are foot contours, one foot contours. So 275. So a, yeah, a bit. 270. We're not going to touch. So. Um, I guess to simplify my question would be if you have another Hurricane Ida or something a little stronger, um, maybe a lot stronger, um, how do you, are, are you comfortable that, that we won't have an overflow of water? So, overflow, so, so this, this is not uh, anything, you know, basically the, the, the geometry of the stream will remain the same. So like I said, that's where current geometry is. So we are not, those boulders will be where the erosion right now is taking place. So the geometry of the stream remains the same. It's just to, uh, to absorb the water force instead of soil and uh, obviously vegetation doesn't, uh, it wasn't able to withstand. So uh, now, there will be boulders in in that particular location. So um, depending, the study was, that I did, it was a uh, HECRAS study previously. I did that study for the for the for the um, step pools, and uh, the size of the rock was obviously sized for, I think, for like 25 year storm event. Um, so, so basically the way that, that the study goes, you kind of determine what would be the velocity and uh, what a quant uh, quantity, and then you know how big of the boulders you need to choose, you know, for that to withstand. So obviously 100 year storm event, you know, it might dislocate the boulders and it is always the same as uh, you know whatever happened with the um with the uh, step pools the the rocks uh, you know they, they got dislocated because there there are always especially for the step pools you, you couldn't have just you know big boulders because there has to be also smaller no uh, i understand but, but but essentially my my question is, is pretty simple, is that you are comfortable that if we have another Ida type storm uh, or, or maybe significantly greater, that you're confident that the boulders that you're putting in um, will do the job, correct? Um, you don't well, really need to it expand would, on it. it. Would just tell me yes or no. It would stop erosion, so nobody can give you warranty for like, what, what if we'll get hundred year storm events? So, <laughs> like if that. No, I know. Be... I've, uh, I've I've been the victim of a hundred year storm, and so, and I so and the, I understand what it can do. Then, then it we might need bigger boulders, and then it would be uh, not feasible to even do the project. But for the most part, it should be uh, should be able to uh, to prevent erosion for the smaller storms that were to happen. And that's that's basically the 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 purpose of this is uh, when you have currently when you have any kind of a storm, the soil is getting washed right back into the pond and uh, um, we don't want to do another dredging. So uh, usually stream bank stabilization with the boulders um, is the, the strongest the strongest stabilization that you can do because obviously there are different ways that you can stabilize but with the big boulders that's we, we are kind of taking the maximum approach. You cannot do okay. any better. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? The, the, the photograph we have in front of us was taken from the bridge, I believe. Yes. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and if I remember correctly, that hill on the right there going down is pretty steep. I mean, that's pretty steep, so. Mm -hmm. Correct, it is. 
but the stream, so I'm looking at the elevations in the stream, if that's what Mr. Perkins was referring to, uh, it's 272 and then 264 right at the, the entrance to the pond. Um, so like we were mentioning earlier, we dredged this pond, uh, I believe it was 2017, 2018, we completed it. Um, we've had no issues up until Hurricane Ida. Uh, we're, if you look at Kathleen's photograph, um, the long oblate, oblong shape that she drew in in black there on the right-hand side of her photograph, it's kind of a slight bend in the stream bank there. Um, so that washed out during Hurricane Ida and we're just simply trying to put some boulders back in there. And then her smaller circle down there is the beginning of our step pools, which essentially worked uh, pretty well. Uh, we just wanna pull some of the material back out of there uh, so we can get our step pools working again. Uh, like Tessa was mentioning, we don't wanna have to dredge this pond again anytime soon. Well, let me ask you this. There is no alternative to this. I mean, this, this is the only alternative you see for you know, for uh, banking up the uh, the bank here, or what do you want? You know, is that correct? There's nothing you, you wouldn't put any a cement, uh, you know, a cement berry in there, or uh, build something rather than have have, have uh, uh, boulders or stones, that type of thing. Is this the the only alternative for this? There are different alternatives with the plants, with the vegetation. There are certain um, ways to do it. But in this particular case, because, you know, it's, I know that the stream actually is powerful when storm yeah. happens. So it has a lot of water and a lot of velocity. So uh, it, it would not be uh, feasible. It, it would not be feasible the alternative of uh, stabilizing with, uh, let's say, uh, vegetation. Right. And there are different ways to, to stabilize the stream with vegetation. Uh, but we, we were just not even exploring that because, uh, of course, uh, it's kind of very natural. The, the stream yeah. itself has a lot of rock. Like if you, if to look upstream, it's, it's all, so usually, you know, it, it, like Tessa was just mentioning, if you were to look upstream on the left side of Kathleen's photograph that you, you guys got, um, it's, it's larger rocks similar to the left side of her photograph all upstream that's slowing the water. And unfortunately right. on the right side is where we lost them. We're just while hoping to put stuff back that's larger than what we lost yeah. to prevent it going forward. Any other questions? Kathleen, anything? No, I, I have no questions. All right, so can I hear a motion? Can I hear a motion? I, I'll move to approve. Who said that? Peggy, Peggy sorry. Peggy. I'll second it. All those in favor, raise your hands. All, right. All those opposed? All right, motion is approved. Uh, Thank you. You can go. Thank ahead. you very much all yep. for your time this evening. Thank I greatly you. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Kathleen, are you there? Uh, yeah. The agent report, administrative action, staff report. Uh, anything you want to? Anything you want to discuss on the, on these two permits? Uh, no, we just had a, a couple couple projects got their uh, applications completed and reviewed. Um, 33 Sunset Hill Road is uh, installation of a uh, pickleball court and a private pickleball court <laughs> and um, some landscaping activities, including a rain garden. Uh, then also the other project is at 85 Lower Road. It's a difficult driveway access for that location. So the homeowner's improving the uh, view uh, in the entrance and exit for that driveway. Um, his stormwater management system is the only thing that's within the review area. So an administrative wetland application was uh, issued for that location and reviews were done by engineering and health on both of those projects as well. 
Any any other business that we haven't? Do uh, you want to discuss anybody? All right. Can I hear a motion to adjourn? George. So moved. Uh, uh, Angela, second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.